killing machine. Or another. Or another. Or another. And a familiar hero on the ground. In the air. Or on horseback. Possible to escape. And action. And passion. Film it on a shoestring at breakneck speed. And you've got the recipe for the Republic Picture Story. A look at one of the best loved studios of Hollywood's Haiti. Public Pictures brought the pop culture of the 30s and 40s to neighborhood movie houses. Week after week, kids sank into their matinee seats to soak up the golden age of the Republic series. Or to ride off into the classic American West. And they gave us visions of the future. Visions that inspire filmmakers today. studio that dollar for dollar packed more movie out of the screen than the majors could believe. From sunrise on into the night, over grueling six-day weeks, no matter how much mayhem these ingenious movie makers were called upon to produce at Republic Pictures, it was all in a day's work. Oh, get out here. I'm gonna hold it. Republic Pictures was a little studio in the San Fernando Valley where movies were made family style. A core of directors, technicians, and actors worked hard at their craft as Republic released a staggering total of over 1,000 films through the late 1950s. When a Republic movie came on the screen, it began with Independence Hall or the familiar Bald Eagle. But after the logo faded, nearly anything could follow. From hillbillies to Macbeth. From caves the concert hall. Republic pictures ranged far and wide, but never forgot their grassroots of an audience. This was a studio with an attitude. It was bold and proud, like its foremost star. Republic pictures was home to John Wayne for 33 films. Always inventing, Republic brought a song to the West with its first major singing cowboy. You want me to want you when I'm in love with somebody else. You expect me to be true and Where's that boy? Where's that boy? He came from out here. Republic brought action, adventure, and escape to neighborhood movie houses across America. And they brought it with style. A scene from the 1936 Western, The Three Musketeers, gave screaming kids at the Bijou a white knuckle display of expert filmmaking. Republic became a studio where major directors could bring their personal visions to the screen. Sometimes visions no other studio would touch. And sometimes their greatest love. That was nice, sir. Mr. Tom. 
John Ford wrote a brooding, soaring love story in The Quiet Man. Nicholas Ray gave us Joan Crawford with a gun in Johnny Guitar. Come and get me, Mr. MacIvers. We don't want no shooting, Bia. Alan Dwan showed the hit war in Sands of Iwo Jima. And Lewis Milestone recreated the magic of boyhood in John Steinbeck's The Red Pony. Brought us some big names and familiar faces. Duke Ellington, Barbara Stanwyck, Victor McLaughlin, Robert Mitchum, John Carroll, Gail Russell, Louis Armstrong, Fred McMurray, Mickey Rooney, Claude Rains, Ernest Borgner, Vincent Price, Bernard Loy, Errol Flynn, Anne Sheridan, Claire Trevor. In all of Hollywood, there was no greater leading men and women on screen, from Dick Tracy to Don Amici, from Ethel Barrymore to the Tiger Woman. Republic Pictures was a studio that blossomed with variety. It knew what its audience wanted, and it delivered the goods. Our story begins on the old Mac Senate block. The public pictures took over the little studio surrounded by orange groves in the fall of 1935. The public pictures was the brainchild of a self-made film tycoon named Herbert J. Yates, a Brooklyn-born kid with a talent for making money and a gambler spirit. Republic movies often portrayed the mogul behind the desk. Hey, get 2,500, say as you get 2,000. Here we go. You lose. It's 2,000. 